Can you do next slide? Yep. Okay. So I've got a few slides to run through. I'm sorry about all that. Um, so I'm going to run through some of the things we've achieved over the last 20 years. That's not just the delivery of our core service, but also one or two other things. One of the things I really want to um, emphasize is team stability. Um, we've had seven staff since the beginning. Three have been with us since the start and three have done 10 to 15 years. So, um, and then Amy joined us nearly four years ago. So the importance of building up the knowledge base of wildlife conservation in, in Hampshire, the importance of the procedures and policies that we work to, ways of working, etc., are all so important. Um, and I just want to just, just move down a couple of bullet points to the fact that we are an accredited record centre, which um, really does emphasise the need to um, deliver a minimum service, to have all our procedures documented, to have backup security of data, etc. That's very important to us. And we've just done a refresh um, a few months ago. We have to do that every five years. So it's a real, um, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, recognition of, of what we do and what we provide, that we are an accredited record centre. Also importantly, I think, the, the people side is very important to us, is we trained around 30 volunteer graduates over the 20 years, um, teaching them the basics of data manipulation, grounding them in, in the knowledge of Hampshire and what's important in terms of wildlife. And I, I can say hand on heart, they've all gone on careers in um, wildlife conservation. Also very important to us is the HVIC partnership, which we have, a, we do have a formal partnership agreement. We started off when we were established with about 15 funding partners, that's gone up to at least 25, one or two drop out and come back in as they go. But most of our agreements are three years, um, one year to five year agreements with some of the um, utilities and NGOs, but that's with all our district councils and environment agency and forest commission, etc. Very important to us, that continuity. Of data supply and we're also um, privileged really to have um, data agreements with at least 10 key, key species groups. We started off with four, you know, the, the, the Hampshire Ontological Society, Botanical Society, Butterfly Conservation, um, Hampshire Mammal Group, um, the Amphibian and Reptile Group, uh, it goes on and on and we've now um, got agreements more with at least 10 groups, um, British Biological Society and Bee Wars etc and we are also able to um, exchange data with uh, organisations that put their data directly onto the MBM gateway. So that's all very important to us and maintaining that relationship. Um, we're maintaining an ever growing core service and that's what the next few slides I will just go into. So just quickly moving on to some of the special projects that we've done over the years. Sorry, Walker, can you just go back? I'm finished. <laughs> Okay, so this is just a highlight of some of, some of the projects we've been involved in, particularly more recently. Um, the Basingstoke Canal Survey and Assessment is a big job, as Ian will testify. Usually manages to lose about a stone in weight going up and down the 26 miles. And we've done that every five years for the last 10 years. Um, so a lot of data to uh, collect from the canal, a lot of sampling and a lot of statistics to do with um, analysing the data and whether the canal is in, in condition or not. We've also produced the Hampshire Ecological Network map. Uh, we did that about three years ago. Uh, it's a combination of all our data sets and that will form a precursor for the nature recovery map, which I'll come on to a bit later. We inputted quite a big chunk into the Hampshire State of the Nature Natural Environment Report, which also covered soils and air quality, water, etc. So there was a whole chapter on biodiversity and we hope to update that um, over the next couple of years. Um, carried out a full review of our sink criteria after 25 years. We started off with two pages of A4 back in 96, and they've served us well, but at the time was to, we had lots of associated documents with all that. So we pulled it all together and updated the criteria and the thresholds and eventually got it published last year. <coughs> so that, that was a, a good tick for us. And we're using it now to evaluate new sites. Um, we're involved at the moment with the species recovery pilot with Natural England, which will help inform the species re recovery strategies that will come out of um, the local nature recovery strategy. It's what's it's what's it's felt out in the um, Environment Act, the more targeted approach to species recovery. 
and we're also just about to complete with the Wildlife Trust a natural capital plan for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Um, so we've been, been inputting a lot of data into that. So moving on, we'll go and then just let's go through some of our core services. And I'm very aware of the time. So we have a survey programme. We've been surveying around 300 sites a year. And as Councillor Warwick said, it's, that's at least 6,000 sites over 20 years. Some sites have been surveyed at least twice, three times. So we're now starting to get a good idea of, site, of how sites are deteriorating or improving as the case may be. Um, and it's important to note actually, we've been doing survey, habitat survey since 1979, not particularly by all of us today, obviously, but some of us have been doing that since at least 1987. So we have had this continuous program of habitat survey. I'm um, looking at um, some of the reasons for doing surveys. Um, that they're basically set out by our partners what they want from us so a lot of it can be um, local plan work looking at site allocations um, or assessing sites before they get allocated i should say um, we do a, we tend to do quite a chunk of sync monitoring work just for its own sake so we keep an eye on how sinks are doing over the years we also do a lot of surveys that establishing initial interest so and that can come about also through local plan work where we then come across new sites which meet the sink criteria same with informing management sites that are owned by um, local authorities country parks that sort of thing the wildlife trust reserves we survey those as well on a rolling program and and that can include SSIs as well so you can see there's we do some SSI monitoring for its own sake but there's a lot of overlap between all that as to whether we're whatever the, the priority reason is for doing the survey and I think the, the graphs just show um, the cumulative in, um, number increasing over the years and it fluctuates from year to year as to whether we get more surveys in that we can cope with and we do sometimes backfill with some contract surveys. Next slide, we'll go please. And all that data goes into our priority habitat mapping. So we're able to produce this wonderful map of where all our priority habitats are. Most of them lie within SSIs and sinks, but about 30% don't. Um, most of those are small ancient woodlands that we don't have any data for. Uh, it's not a priority in a way for us to survey them, but we know they're ancient woodlands and they sort of receive some protection in, with that respect. But obviously we'd like to get all our priority habitat surveyed at some point. That's just give you some figures on um, percentage of the county that is recorded as priority habitat. Next slide, please. Okay. So total number of sinks designated now stands at 4,124. We started off back in 2002 and we were established with 3,000 already designated. And that's because in the previous few years, since 96, when the, um, the guidance came out, the planning guidance came out, we were already doing audits of every district council one at a time. And each one was, you know, we were coming up with four or 500 sites that met the criteria. So that's how we quickly got to 3,000. And from then on, We've obviously been surveying new, site, new sites that have met the criteria and we've done well. Whether we get to a thousand, we're at 966 at moment, over this year, I'm, I'm probably not quite sure we'll get there because I think it's true to say we're, we are finding less every year, which, which is understandable. Um, I mean, we're just lucky that we still keep coming across little gems of sites, meadows uh, and woodlands that, that um, meet the criteria. Next slide, please, Wolfgang. And this one just shows that as well as surveying for new sites, um, which is the blue line, which obviously is slowly decreasing over time, that spike back in 2002-03 was our final audit of um, our audit of the final district, which was Eastleigh. So that put a little bit of a spike there when we did the audit of Eastleigh Borough Council as HP. Um, and then the, num the, yellow, the orangey line above is actually the number of existing sinks that are surveyed every year. As I said, we do need to keep on top of what we've designated to make sure it maintains its interest. So that's usually about 120 a year. Um, and that over the 20 years, so everybody can do their maths, is roughly 50% of all sinks. We'll get a resurvey over that 20 years. If we had more capacity, we could do more. But um, we are keep on top of it and we do survey the most, um, I suppose, vulnerable and threatened habitats where we can. We target the, the species rich grasslands and the relic bits of fen and stuff. Not so many woodlands. Woodlands are fairly well protected, even though I think as Ian would agree with me, many of them becoming more derelict and structurally undiverse, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, hopefully things will change with the new agri-environment schemes coming forward. Next slide, people. 
that's just a quick map of all the designated sites, the SSIs and the sites. And it's that map coupled with the habitat map that we have built our ecological network map from. Next slide, people. And I just thought I'd put this one in, and I did some analysis a couple of years ago for this, so I apologise we haven't gone quite up to date, but it's just to show that even though we are designating new things, we have over, um, between 2005 and 2017, we've lost 94 things. This graph is only, is actually covering a slightly shorter period, um, but it's just to show that it's not just loss, it's decline. So decline due to lack of management is the key one. If you look at the final column, the purple is decline due to lack of management and some has been lost due to lack of management. It's really gone beyond recovery. Um, there's also losses to development and losses to agricultural improvement, um, which are not so, not, the numbers aren't so big for that, but just a reminder that um, we are losing sight still. And the, the picture in the top corner is of a rush pasture um, over in Fairham that was um, ploughed. I don't think it was deep ploughed. I think um, our surveyors still found relic bits of sedge and stuff so whether it's covered or not we do need to go back at some point next slide please so turn next to another big area of our work is data requests obviously we're collating all this data from our species groups and from surveys we do um, and so data requests we've gone from before hvic setup we were dealing with about 200 data requests a year because we were we did we did maintain the hampshire what we called the hampshire biological record back then um, and it's gone up, it's quadruple, we're now doing over 800 data requests a year, which as you see over the 20 years is now hit over 12,000. Um, the reason we are able to maintain <laughs> that increase is partly due to um, our systems, Wolfgang and our systems, you know, we can semi-automate a lot of this data now, make it easy to, to um, we've got templates to pull the data off and extract it into reports. And if you just go on to the next slide Wolfgang I've got just a couple of pie charts on where those data requests come from so back in 2002 you'll see the, the sort of the bigger blue area 45 percent was from um, consultants um, to support planning applications for proposed development and then if you look across 2020 now bearing in mind the number of data requests has quadrupled it still takes up a huge chunk of our time and that's good really because more and more consultants are being asked to provide baseline data to help support the surveys that they then do um, and to pick out species obviously that they probably wouldn't find because of time of year etc you, know, you know it's a snapshot in time when you go out and do a survey so the data that we hold helps provide that baseline um, the other thing just to note I think research and study um, we were getting a lot of requests back then from students that doesn't happen so much anymore and I think that's one area we do need to pick up on. Um, I haven't actually done analysis to see if we're still getting the same number of requests because obviously we've gone up fourfold but um, it's one area to worry about and, and then the other area to worry about is, is the yellow which is agri-environment schemes. So whilst we provide data to organisations managing land for wildlife which is the green area, this is conservation land management by NGOs, community groups, etc. The actual data going into agri-environment scheme to support um, those applications is very, very low. So farmers aren't coming to us. Back in 2002, Natural England would have had a lot of our data and that would have helped them assess applications. But I think at the moment, very little data is being used for to support agri-environment schemes. Hopefully that will change with the new um, ELM scheme, the um, Environmental Land Management Scheme where we're hoping farmers will come more to us. We're certainly getting an increase in forestry companies coming to us now for the Woodland Creation Scheme, which is good news. Next slide, please, Wolfgang. Right, time, so <laughs> thanks, Lizzie. Um, data holdings, obviously, um, we've gone up to um, over 8 million records, thanks to um, all the recording that goes on out there by the expert um, groups and volunteers. The precision of data has got better. So the green, the darker green, is everything that's recorded at 100 metre or better, which is good news. Um, still getting a lot, of, a lot of records coming in at, at two, at, um, sorry, at 1K, um, which I'm surprised at. I thought that would narrow a bit. Well, can I move on because I'm just realising the time. So recording precision, 
has gone up. Um, the brown is the uh, the 100 meter has gone up from 43% to 49%, which is good news. Um, and the amount recorded at Tetrad or 10K has gone down, which is brilliant news. Next slide, I'm nearly there. We screen planning applications. Uh, I won't spend any time on that one, but we do an awful lot of work on that. For all the well, most of the district councils, some of them will do it in house, but we provide we flag planning applications that might impact on a, a species or priority habitat, etc. Next slide. Highlights: continued support for our centre. Uh, designated our four thousand sink was a big highlight. We got there. Uh, one of the things that came, I asked uh, my team about all this, and one of the things that came through from um, our surveyors was increased positivity being shown by landowners towards sites they own, which is really good news. I've mentioned advances in technology that makes us more efficient. Um, the scanning of all our survey reports. We have 20 years worth of paper reports, they're so now at our fingertips to scan copies. Discovery of new wildlife sites production of our ecological network map. And I also just want to pay tribute to all the superb atmospheres being produced by the species recording groups over the years. There's probably not a day when I don't dip into one or another for whatever bit of work I'm working on. So just uh, as a, a grateful thanks for, for those and, and hopefully we can support more of those to come. Next slide. I'm going to just come up with a few low lights. Um, I think it's just worth drawing attention to some of them. Um, I'm not going to say the withdrawal of funding from Natural England after 15 years of really supporting us was, was, was a real low, low point for us. Um, and although we've done certain projects for them over the years since then, it, it's, I think it's not the same as them having that data at their fingertips. We lost the habitat, the, the land management team um, a few years ago that was in-house with HEC. I think that was a result of the 2008 austerity cuts. It makes it more difficult for us to pass landowners on to someone who wants some advice, although there are lots of others out there giving advice, so we just have to spread our net wider. Continued degradation of sinks, and I think the spraying of herbicide on the Greenland Orchid Meadow at Denmead was a real low point again for us because we were trying so hard to get that into SSI status and it met the criteria, but nothing happened. Onslaught of ash dieback is obviously going to make huge changes to our landscape, which I think we're just seeing all around us now. Um, lack of monitoring of stewardship schemes. We're not convinced from the, some of the schemes that we've gone in and surveyed that they're not delivered, that they're delivering for biodiversity. And we really hope that will change with the new scheme where I think there's going to be more emphasis on monitoring. And just an ongoing decline, which we all know. We, we, we're, in a, we're in a nature crisis. Um, there's no doubt about it. And I think the final slide, Wolfgang, as I'm just going slightly over time. Next, what's next? Continue, continue to deliver our core services. We've got some gaps to fill in with some of the species groups. We've just taken on a two-year post uh, with funding from the Woodland Trust and our, all our district councils to review the ancient woodland inventory to capture in particular all those woodlands below two hectares that were missing from the original inventory. Um, obviously biodiversity net gain is, is coming in, it's going to become mandatory where the land um, developers have to deliver 10% more biodiversity than what was on site originally. That's going to involve uh, a bit of work with help with the um, providing data for that. And we'll also be trans transitioning from a current habitat classification that we use to another one. It's, it's one that's DEFRA of now supporting called UK HAB. Um, and that's going to involve a lot of changes to our systems. Um, our surveyors have got to go out on site with a UK HAB head on in terms of the methodology and the coding. Um, so that's the, not to underestimate the amount of work involved there. And then obviously we're going to get called in to help with the local nature recovery strategy for Hampshire and the new nature recovery network map. And I've just showed in the corner there just what our current ecological network map looks like, but obviously we'll be moving forward with the new methodology being promoted by Natural England.